that was the best bit of reversing I've ever seen, Ryan. Thanks. Well done, mate. Thank you very much, Billy. The wood chipper is now out of the weather and in safe dry storage. But I've also got an idea now. I think I should bring down the digger, which is currently at the chateau as well, and put it in here just so it's dry and looked after and safe for the winter. So yeah, we might have to bring that down, Ryan. Okay. Will your car tow a three ton digger? No. I don't think it will. <laughs> so we'll have to use the transit. <laughs> That is how we do that. <laughs> You're doing a fantastic job, Rick. It's all down to the sander, really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just need to dust it off. Good man. The sander bulb. Yes, that does need doing. The work never stops, does it, Rick? Never. But how, how do you feel working at the convent in this kind of environment, Rick? It's a fantastic opportunity. Ah. <laughs> no, it's really good. Um, every day you're learning new skills getting to restore a building um, and obviously uh, the bonus is working with your mates so it's all good. Happy days. Happy days. Just need to crack on. Safety first, Ryan, safety first. Yeah, I see you like to keep a nice tidy workspace, Rick. Yeah, you've got, you know, do one little job, tidy up, get ready for the next job. Nice clean work surface, and then uh, makes life easier. Hello, Ryan. Billy. What are you doing up here? Well, um, these um, sort of things that stop people from falling out look like they need a few coats of paint. So um, I'm just up here quickly, just painting, painting away. Oh, you're quite, you're quite high up, Billy. It's all right. Are you, are you afraid of heights at all? When we first bought the chateau and we first purchased a cherry picker. I was afraid of heights, I must admit. But work needed doing on the roof because it was leaking literally everywhere. And you just get used to it after a while. I mean, you could be 36 meters up high on the roof in wind like this. The cherry picker is swaying. You know, there are moments where you think, what am I doing with my life? I'm mental or something, but you just got to get on with it and you soon realise that they're safe machines. And yeah, since then, I don't really care about heights. You know, Billy, you don't have to do it from the outside on the ladder. You could just come inside and paint from here. Do you know what? That's a really good idea. It didn't even occur to me, right? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll do the next ones from inside. It'd be much safer, I think. Looks good. Bum, ba, bum, ba, bum. There we go. So Ryan had a bit of an idea and I think it's a fantastic idea. Um, we're going to temporarily use this space as a bit of a gym. So I'm going to bring down the treadmill. Um, we're going to get some benches and some weights and just things like that and use this room to work on our personal fitness because um, vlogging does take its toll on you a little bit where you don't have much time to focus on important things like your health. So I think it's a fantastic idea. We need to buy some things, don't we? we? Need to get some mats, we need to get some weights. I don't have any. 
I've got a treadmill. You want to get one of those rowing machines and what's the one you sort of walk on? Elliptic bike. Elliptic bike. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you, we can utilise this space for the time being. Just spend an hour a day in here. I noticed there's a radiator in here, Billy. Yes. Is that uh, on or connected in any way or...? Because I can imagine in the winter, this little room might get a bit cold. Well, what we would normally do is plug in this electric one. Oh, there's an electric one just next to it. I didn't even notice that. Fair enough. Because the old system is outdated, inefficient, hasn't been turned on for about 15 years apparently. So we can't use it, so we're going to use an electric radiator for now. But in a room like this, why would you need heating? You're exercising. You need to generate your own heat. That's true, you're going to be all hot and sweaty. Yeah, what do you want the heating for? Of course. Just close the doors and the windows and it'll be like a little, little sauna, a little steam room, the two of us. Yeah. When we first viewed the convent with the estate agent, he told us something really, really interesting. He said the local town was trying to purchase it. Um, I think that was probably just a sales tactic, try and put a little bit of pressure on us. But he also mentioned that a local cult or sect was also trying to buy it. And it went as far as almost the last signature, the last sale signature, and they just couldn't get the money together. So let's talk about that a minute, because I find it really interesting that a cult were trying to, were trying to buy a building like this in, a, in the centre of a town like this. I think a building like this would actually be ideal for a cult, probably, because of its magnitude, its space, the amount of bedrooms it has, but also, most importantly, the privacy it has. Because there's only one way into this building, the main gate. The walls around the garden means it's completely secure and completely private. So we're gonna walk around the building a minute and just talk about why they would have bought it and what they would have used it for. This is the only entrance to the convent, which probably makes it ideal for a cult, I imagine, because, you know, you've got one access, you can keep track of people who are entering and exiting. You've got a courtyard like this, which makes it ideal for a private community, such as a cult or a sect, because you've got hundreds of windows, hundreds of rooms to keep track of people who are, you know, within the community. So, you know, I suppose it probably does make it quite ideal as a property. The definition of a cult, a small religious group that is not part of a larger and accepted religion that has beliefs regarded by many people as extreme or dangerous. So there you go, I've just learned something. But you told me a story once, Ryan, about your dad was approached by a sect or a cult. Yes. Mm -hmm. One day we had um, four people turn up at uh, my parents' house. Mm -hmm and knock on the door with flyers mm -hmm. um, and uh, they were telling my dad about the religious community that they have um, and it was, um, yes, it, it was indeed a cult. They were trying to recruit us oh. into their... Um, You'd have been great assets, their, I think. ...their group and uh, <laughs> you would have been great assets. <laughs> Thanks. And... Um, <laughs> It happened, it was going on, so every time they would come round, mm -hmm. my dad was very welcoming. He'd never let them in the house, but he would um, just talk to them, like outside for five or ten minutes, yeah. and say, yes, yes, oh wow, very interesting, yes, maybe but I'm they, busy today, so goodbye, Maybe they saw your dad as some sort of visionary, leader? I, 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 I highly doubt like that. that, but I mean... I'd, he could he, have guided the community into better times? Well... He d did have the, the ha handy, he was like a handyman, so yeah, he would have been possibly useful. But this, they were, they weren't friendly people. They were quite old, and um, when they saw me, the next time they come round, they came round with a, a young lady, kind of my age. Maybe. I think it's a bit of a recruitment tactic. Um, but anyhow, in the end, obviously, my mum said, look, Glenn, you have to stop, <laughs> stop <laughs> being so nice to them, yeah. and just tell them, uh, that you're not interested. Were you attracted to the young lady they brought round? Not in the slightest, Billy. Oh. Because I, I'm, I well, have their tactic didn't work, then did it? No, it didn't. Oh. And even if I, even if I were, I wouldn't join their group. Um, but I do feel for the people who are quite um, vulnerable or down on their luck, and they turn to these groups in life mm -hmm. to um, for guidance, essentially, and for acceptance. Mm -hmm.
With a very large kitchen like this as well, you could supply meals to all the community members of your sect or cult. Um, do you know this video seems like it's turning into us as property sellers trying to attract a sect or a cult, Ryan. It's not really the idea I had imagined for this video today. No. We... Would you like to buy the convent? It's great for a sect. Yeah. All I wanted to do is talk about a sect was trying to buy it, not show them how good it is. <laughs> You're giving them ideas. But no, not this one, because um, I mean, look at the, uh, the kitchen. It's in great condition. Is it? You just have to see through. See through the mess. Because in actual fact, stripping this kitchen out, getting rid of all the old plumbing, all the old electrics, studding the walls out, insulation, put a new full ceiling up, Put beautiful new cabinets everywhere. Not new, old ones. Um, it's got great windows. There's not much to it. Maybe a new floor as well. Yeah, there's actually not a lot of work in here. But of course, we're not going to use the convent for anything like that. Um, we only have good intentions. Um, I don't really know what the plan is with the convent yet. I'm still in two minds over a few ideas, but respectfully and tastefully, we will renovate this building for its future purpose, which will hopefully be for something like, I don't know, for the town or the community to enjoy. At least it still works. Right, so we've come back to the chateau, or more specifically, the guest house, because we've had a little bit too much for one day of the convent, and we're gonna do a little bit of work here. So I've got a hedge trimmer, and we're going to trim this hedge. So let's crack on. So it's the end of the day, we finish work, so we're gonna have a little game of snooker quickly. I'm absolutely terrible at this game, and we haven't even finished the pool table yet. I still haven't ordered the new felt and the leather things for holding the ball collectors on, but it doesn't matter. Oh, wee! Well done, Billy! Sorry. <laughs> Rick's laughing at me. If I do it at 70 degrees, uh, with the wind blowing to the west, it should go straight in the hole. Mmm. Thank you everyone for watching today's video. We got a lot of work done today. Thank you so much to Rick for your help. And thank you to Ryan who filmed the majority of this video and also edited most of it. So thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you all tomorrow.